Hi guys, welcome to Extra Talk today with another special guest. And this time it's the furthest away that we ever had. And that's Rick all the way from Australia. Hi, Rick. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good. Thank you. So just to be clear for our viewers, what time is it? It's 7 a.m. on Tuesday morning. <laughs> all right, great. Ijax, everybody knows, everybody know Ijax. Ijax, welcome. Hi, guys. Okay, so guys, before we start, uh, Rick, Australia, Ajax fan, please explain to us, how is that possible? Uh, well, I started watching football um, at the 1994 World Cup, uh, USA. Um, football in Australia is not very big back then. And uh, you didn't get a lot of live broadcasts. Um, you pretty much got like a English Premier League highlights package in the middle of night on some remote station. Um, but I was watching uh, the UEFA Champions League, the 94-95 final, which happened to be live on TV. And um, that's the, the famous uh, Ajax win. Um, and uh, that was the first pretty much club uh, game that I'd seen. And um, and from back then, I was a little kid. I was an impressionable kid, and uh, Ajax won the final. So that's um, that's who I decided to follow. Um, and uh, you know, after that, I asked my parents for an Ajax jersey, and they had no idea who who they were. Um, <laughs> and uh, I was I was lucky to get uh, a, like a, a full you know a kid's kit of um, of the, the subsequent year um, ninety five ninety six the green one with the big big Ajax logo on it. And um, from there on, I've, I've been Ajax ever since. So um, in the in the nineties and early noughties, it's been pretty hard to kind of follow. Uh, but yeah, you know, with, with technology improvements and things like that, uh, I've I've been able to watch quite a few games this season. Um, and uh, getting uh, merchandise and things like that is uh, has been getting easier and easier every year. So um, I'm I'm very proud to be an Ajax and. Uh, that's that's pretty much the story. That's great. That's a great story. So, did you ever had the privilege of um, of coming to Amsterdam? Or, or I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. So, um, my, my friend of mine got married in Ireland in uh, 2014, and uh, I managed to persuade my wife to to come over to Amsterdam and um, and watch a game. And we watched the last game of the season uh, against NEC. And uh, that was a two-all draw. But the thing that really got me was, um, I think it was at halftime or most of been post-game where they had all the all the junior teams and the trophies and stuff that they had won um, through uh, through the season. And they walked around and uh, were presented to the crowd. And um, I was really chuffed with that uh, and uh, everything else that that uh, the stadium had uh, had provided uh, the, the pre-game environment outside of the stadium uh, and, and the post-game train train ride back uh, afterwards and talking to some of the fans. So that was that was a really nice uh, touch. And um, but I haven't managed to got have uh, visit back since. But um, with uh, with the current environment, it, it makes it very hard to get in and out of the country. Absolutely, absolutely. Ajax, can I ask Rick one more question? I'm of testing course. your patience. I'm, I'm, all yes. I'm, all, I'm all yes. I'm, it's very interesting. <laughs> all right. So, Rick, um, what does it mean, just for us to understand, what does it mean for you if you want to watch a game? I mean, okay, let's go with the Air Divisi game on Sunday, 2.30. It's here, 2.30. What does it mean for you? What, what time do you, do you watch the game? Oh, okay. So, normally, a 2.30 game means, like, 10.30 to midnight. Um, the, the best time I, I usually get is... Uh, is the, the early the lunch game the twelve o'clock uh, game is is probably the most time friendly for me. Yeah. Um, I can usually get um, say like if you have the Friday or Thursday night game midweek, uh, uh, and that game ends up being at like five a.m. So while I'm making breakfast, I can have that on. But that's only if um, the the English channel uh, that I've got a subscription with. Um, has that game on live. Otherwise, I am usually stuck to trying to find a Dutch uh, stream somewhere and um, or the, the highlights from the Ajax YouTube channel. So it, it makes it hard. Obviously, the European games are, are pretty easy to, to get a hold of here, but um, the Eredivisie games, um, 
yeah, a bit on and off. But the cup games, um, because the Premier Sports don't have the rights to that, I don't get any of those. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we've heard, yeah, we've heard that also not from you, but also from other international fans that the cup game, the Caraf Bay Cup game is a problem. Yeah. You cannot yeah. find it anywhere. No. Yeah. no. All right. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you. For no problems. Um, sure. Ijax, welcome. Okay, so guys, what are we going to talk today? I'm very excited. It's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a, of a, of a nice discussion to have. Um, and also, it's, it's a, not silly, but it's a simplistic discussion to have because uh, what we're going to discuss today is um, Overmarsh mentioned a couple of times that we have to sell 50 million in the summer. Now, that's, that's just, just a number. We don't know what might happen if we're going to buy more players, et cetera, et cetera. So just for the sake of today's discussion, what we're going to do is we're going to just keep it simple. We have to sell 50 million this summer. So Rick, you're Overmarsh today. Ajax, you're Overmarsh today. And I want from you, what would, what would you do to come up with 50 million with the current squad? And I want our viewers also to think what they would do and just let us know, just have a nice discussion about it. So I'll start with, let me give Ajax, Ajax this one <laughs> and then Rick can go after. Ajax, your take. Yeah, uh, thanks Juan. Um, uh, also a very interesting story, Rick, nice to, uh, to uh, get the story behind the defense. So thank you for that. No um, also, um, uh, the, the, the 50 million. Yeah, it's uh, in, in previous seasons, like decades ago, 50 million was like a lot, you know, but since with uh, Matthijs de Ligt, Frenkie de Jong, uh, Donny van der Beek, that sort of uh, amounts, you get spoiled. But uh, in the corona pandemic, uh, we need to see to make this 50 million again. So uh, for me, four players are, um, are on the... Yeah, on the verge of maybe uh, being sold. And uh, this is definitely probably Onana because of his uh, doping uh, uh, problem and he want, doesn't want to uh, extend his contract. So he only has a contract until 2022. And I think his value uh, suffered uh, under these conditions uh, because he doesn't want to extend and he only has one co contract year left and he cannot play full season. So uh, you have to cash on him while you still can. And um, before I would have said you can easily get 20, 20 plus million for him. But in the current conditions, this will be a hard uh, target to meet. So uh, for me, if he does not want to extend, Onana has to go because you can still get some money for him. Uh, and I hope at least 10 million uh, in the current situation if he uh, does not extend his contract. Uh, also, um, my favorite uh, player of the squad, uh, Zakaria Laviat. Uh, can go at any price. No, uh, seriously, um, I think he still has a value for, for other teams, but for, for the Ajax squad, he's, uh, he's not good enough with the current players that are in. And um, I think, think we saw that this season, he, he has some potential value, but there are so many good players now in the squad. It's not only 11 starting players. We have uh, on the bench also a few players that are better than him, and uh, he's not first uh, in the picking order to go in as a 12th man or something. He also has a contract until 2022. So for me, if you can get 5 million for him, it will be a good, uh, a good deal. And if you pay uh, 5 million for Kleiber, uh, 5 million for uh, Labiat should be possible too. So uh, <laughs> I, I just, still have, <laughs> I I just, still have hope. Me, uh, yeah, good. So you mentioned two players. Let me just pause you right there. Yeah. And we'll go to Rick. And I want Rick's yeah. first two names. I don't know how many names you have, but just give us your first two picks. I think the obvious two uh, are definitely uh, Anana. Um, I think even with the, the interest into the go-ahead Eagles uh, goalkeeper that's come overnight, uh, Jake Orta, um, that that looks like will potentially be the Anana replacement. Um, the way that he's played, obviously, for the go-ahead Eagles over the season, um, obviously puts him in high high esteem with the club. Um, so that you know, Anana is definitely going to go. Uh, like I Jack said, you know that the, the, the doping ban will probably cause a bit of an issue with the value. Um, you probably may look 20 million max, but whether that happens or not, I'm not sure um, because who's going to take a player they can't play for eight months. So whether they leave it until the very last minute to kind of minimise that uh, that non-playing time for that new club, um, that may that may help them. But uh, if they sell them early. Uh, in the transfer window, obviously that's that's less time that they that he's going to be able to participate 
in, in terms of training because, of course, the, the, the doping ban means he cannot um, in any way be a part of, of the club. Um, the second one is uh, obviously Nico Taglafico. He's expressed interest in leading the club into a more challenging league. Um, so, and, and, and he would definitely get, you know, upwards of 20 million as well. So if you've got 20 million for both of those, that's, you know, two, two thirds of your way there. Um, but I'm unsure that you'll probably get 20 million for both. You may get 20 million for Nico, but you may only get 15 for, uh, for Anana. And that still leaves you with 15 that you've got to try and chase. Yeah. So listen, um, so at this point, you both came up with two names. Um, I'm going to challenge a little bit the value that you guys are giving to the players. So just a minute. So at the total, we're now at 40 million with Rick. And with Ajax, we're at, uh, you said how much for Nana, you said? Also 20? Uh, at least, 10, no, at least 10 million because I 10 think million. 20, the current situation is not doable. Okay, and 5 million for Labiot, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to challenge you both. On Onana, first and foremost, um, I think. Yep, uh, I think Ajax. Yeah, Ajax is closer to the to the number because, and even that, I have high doubts because I'm trying to think now. If you're Onana and you're in this situation, and let's be honest, there's still an appeal going on, and we don't know what's going to happen. But just for the argument's sake, I'm Onana, and I know for for the best of my career, yes. Why would you? Um, why would you not wait until the end of the season, be a free agent, and leave Ajax? Honestly, simple, right? who wants to answer first? I, will, I want to answer first, if I can. Yeah, sure. Um, he made a stupid mistake, and Ajax is being very friendly about it and very nice about the situation. It is his um, obligation as a professional footballer to make sure he takes care of his body at the, at, at the, at the best of his capacity. And he just <coughs> failed and just took a pill and, and now both Ajax and himself are screwed. So he's getting money for, I don't know if they paid uh, his salary still. I don't know the, de the details, but uh, he's being paid good money. Uh, the club invested in him and he cannot deliver what he's supposed to deliver when you have a contract. Same with the company. If you work at the company and you do not deliver what they expect from you, they're not going to say, oh, take a year off and we just pay you. You, you, you are not able to deliver the, uh, the, the, the things you need to do. So for me, uh, he should at least resign for one year because he made a mistake and the club suffers for it now. So the least he can do is make up the year that he lost while taking a wrong pill, you know? That is my uh, personal uh, opinion about it. If well, he's thinking yeah, about his okay. own career... Yeah. Then, then he could probably just wait, sit it out, and be, be a free agent. Yes, but I'm that would be a very you. nasty gonna, thing to do. Yeah, I'm going to poke you even more. I'm sorry, Rick. Just one yeah. Why did Ajax? Why did Ajax? I mean, try to also understand what Ajax is doing. They have, like Rick said, they're going after the Go Ahead Eagles goalkeeper now, Horter. I'm not saying he's going to be number one pick for next season, but look at what they're doing on the goalkeeper side. They already also signed Remco Pasvier. They're already making moves on the goalkeeping side of things. Isn't that a signal that Onana is no longer in the plans of Ajax? So why, yes. wouldn't, why would it be very stretch in my sense of an idea that Onana will think, you know what? I mean, if the situation doesn't change, again, if the appeal doesn't get cut back for him, for his career, it would be better to become a free agent. Definitely. Definitely, but I'm not. I'm not stating my opinion. Uh, uh, what is best for Onana? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not objective in this situation. I'm thinking what is best for the club and what would be gentleman thing to do if you screwed up like this. So definitely for him, it would be the best uh, possible way to 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 make the most of his next move. But is it is it nice to your former employee, uh, your employer? Is it nice to the fans that you uh, that supported you uh, last five years? Uh, no, I don't. I do not think so. But for him, yes, it would be best. Or getting sold at a lower price now, with the uh, the possible uh, um, yeah suspension at his new club that they have to wait it out, or just wait until you're a free agent agent and go for it. Yeah. So for him, for his career, it would be best. But would it be gentleman like? No, far from it. Yeah. So Rick, my question to you would be because you mentioned Onana for twenty million. Um, I'm taking away that argument of free agent. I'm going. One step back, 
if I would be a club and I would be interested in Onana, why would I pay 20 million for a goalkeeper that doesn't play for half a year? Well, that's exactly right. Why would you? Um, I, I, I think for, for, uh, for Onana, his, his options are very, very limited, his agent. The, the club is in, um, in the best position here to, to either push him out um, or to, to keep him. So uh, they, they have the, the cards to their chest. Um, 20 million is, is just like a round figure based on, on, on his market value, but um, whether, you know, different, different situations arise and, and that's where this doping situation um, has obviously caused a massive drift within between himself and, and, and the club. So, and that will definitely affect his value. Like I said, whether he gets 20 million, it's probably unlikely. Um, you're probably looking at maybe 10 to 15 at most. Um, and yes, exactly. Who, what club is going to take him with an eight month ban on him? Now, he may have to go in to an EPL club as a second or third strike, or maybe Italy or Spain or something like that. Um, but he will not be number one wherever he goes um, at least for one season. So like you said to Ajax, is it better for him just to, you know, run out the season playing as number two or three when he comes back? Because, you know, even when he does come back, he's not going to be number one goalkeeper with Ajax. And whether he ex extends straight away um, is very unlikely, I think. Um, you're likely to get 10 million. Yes, I agree with you there. Um, but, you know, he, he's not going to be number one for anyone, um, whoever he signs with. So, um, yeah, it's very, very unlikely. Do you both uh, think that there might be a realistic opportunity, I mean, a realistic chance that he might become a free agent? In his interests, yes, it would be in, in for, for him to become a free agent. For the club, definitely not. Um, you know, they've spent many years uh, looking after him. Um, and he's pretty much in the prime of his career now, except for this this ban. I mean, it's the second time he's had to face an extended uh, period away from the game. But, um, you know, like when he comes back, he's still only 27, right? So, um, yeah, look, he's still got many years of, of keeping in front of him. So, you know, who wouldn't want to take him except for this eight-month period that's in front of him? I think it's not going to be a free agent problem. I think we have to give Overmars the credits that he deserves. And I think he will not um, let it drag on that long. So I have, I have faith in Overmars in what he's done like last years. And I think, um, especially now with the Brobby situation that has passed, that he will be more sharp to, to prevent certain things from happening again, you know, for, for being free agent and just walking out of the club. So I think he will, uh, he will cash on him. Um, probably this transfer window. Yes. So, Rick, uh, thank you, Ajax. Rick, uh, moving on to your uh, second player, Taifiko. Uh, Ajax, I guess also you would have Taifiko on your list? It's, it's my third, yes. Okay, so can I ask you how much would you value him? I would value Sorry. him between... Oh, for Rick or for me? No, I'm asking you because I know that Rick mentioned 20 million. I'm just okay. wondering what you have, just to have a discussion. About. For me, for me, it's somewhere in the range of 20 to 30 million, and I think I will, I will just put it in the middle, like 25. I think this is doable. He still has a contract until 2023, and I think it would have been 30 easily uh, if the Corona pandemic uh, didn't hit. But I think uh, it, every player is just not going to be sold for that much anymore. Uh, so I think 25 million would be a good value for him and Ofmars would do a good job uh, getting that for him. I disagree with, with both of you. <laughs> I, I, respectfully, of course, but I think you guys are looking too much at his current value, which is which I would give between 20 and 30. I totally agree. But I don't think with the situation in which he is now, and I think also with the, you know, like, I think they have some kind of an agreement if a clock comes because he has been already looking to leave Ajax last year, maybe even the year before that. Um, and I think if somebody comes with 15 million, he's gone. I think, I think the real Overmars would, would agree to that. Yeah, I, I do agree I do with not, that. Uh, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Eric okay. first, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I do go agree ahead. with you, Juan, because um, I have read a couple of articles with him uh, indicating that, you know, 
things just didn't work out in, in previous experience, um, transfer windows. Um, but he's keen to leave. And if it, it's more of someone approaching him as opposed to him leaving. He's happy at Ajax. He's happy with the way that Ajax plays. He's, he's very comfortable there. Uh, however, you know, if the club comes along, he's not going to fight it. He will happily move on. Um, and I'm sure Overmars will do everything to help him. But I, I do believe it will have to be the right club. Um, he has mentioned it would need to be a more challenging league. So you're looking at somewhere like Germany, Italy, Spain. Um, and, you know, those those clubs, whether they come in with, uh, with a sharp pen um, and kind of push it down just so he, he will accept that. Um, and Overmars will accept that. I'm, I'm not sure, but I think for for the time being, uh, I think 20 max is probably a reasonable effort. Um, like you said, 15 maybe. Um, but I think Overmars will do a good job there and probably try and push to get maybe 20 inclusive of bonuses. Well, it also depends on the buying party, right? Because he's been massively linked with Leeds United. So if a Premier League com comes. They have more buying power, of course. So then you can yeah, yeah. sell for a little bit more. So I agree with you. And, and, and we've seen in the past that where clubs have bought uh, from the Premier League, they're willing to pay a little bit more as well. True, true. Ajax, your take. You you disagree. Go ahead. Um, I just want to say, I do not know about the gentleman's agreement. I think they would be um, wanting to help him because he extended so that, he, that they maybe will not ask the, uh, the jackpot for him. But uh, I think still it's possible to, to reach like 20, 25 million. Uh, let's, let's take Sieg for an example. How much did Sieg leave for? He was also like linked with several clubs for several years and he stayed and eventually he got his transfer to Chelsea. But I think it was uh, at least that kind of amount. I do not know uh, by memory anymore, but it wasn't 15 million. It so was 40, uh, for me, it it's still... A, it was 40. Yeah, exactly, 40. So... But yeah, and that was a gentle, was a gentleman, uh, uh, gentleman's agreement amount, you know. So yeah, but it's still a lot. Yeah, but hold on, hold on. See, yeah, I know it's not Takli Vigo, it's no Sieg. I un I understand. <laughs> but not only that, Sieg, uh, the Sieg market value at that point was like something like sixty at least. So yeah, we true. did sell him with with a discount, one hundred percent. Yeah, that, that could be true, but still 40, 40 uh, out of 60 is 66%. And I think the value of Taklifico is around 30 million, uh, according to the internet. I'm not saying it still is with the, with the corona happening, but 20 would be also 60%. So let's, right. let's go for 20 at least. All right, good. So uh, moving on, with, which other players do you have uh, on your list? Uh, I'll go with Rick first. I have uh, Eklin Kamp. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it may become a, uh, a Noah Lang, Serginio Dest kind of situation where the value, is, he's up and coming, he's probably not hitting the, the minutes that he, that he should um, and whether he may be keen on a loan and Ten Hag um, is more keen to sell, um, I, I think it, it may be that. We've got plenty in the attacking midfield. Um, Ajax said Labiad is probably another option in the attacking midfield that, that we need to drop off. Um, and you, you may get maybe five for him as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I think Eklund Kamp uh, or Labiad would, uh, would definitely need to go. Yeah, there were some reports uh, not, not long ago this week, I think, that uh, Ajax would be interesting in extending the contract of Eklund Kamp. So what do you think? Some Ajax fans are even saying that this might be just a financial reason behind it, just to uh, you know, sell him for more. Uh, what's your take on that one? Uh, yeah, that, that's probably um, the, the best take that you could probably give on it. Um, I, I don't know how long Eklund Kamp will have at the club, whether it becomes this summer, the winter, or maybe next summer. But um, I, I think, like I said, it becomes like a, a Noah Lang kind of situation where He's not getting the entirety of minutes that he probably thinks he deserves. And so he may ask for a loan and then Ten Hag goes, well, no, I'm going to sell you and, and try and get the money that way. All right. All right. Um, hi, Jeff. Uh, any other names on your list? <clears throat> yeah, I have Neres. And uh, Neres has his contract until, uh, until 2023. And you see names dropping like Sulemana. It's another winger that we try to attract and sign for our club. So um, I think 
Uh, we saw this season that Anthony is higher in the picking order at the moment, and Tadic is going to play on on on, on the left wing. He's been uh, named the, today uh, player of the season, Ajax seat of the season from Ajax, and also best player of of the Eredivisie. So he's our most valuable player, and he's the most valuable player of the league. So you're not going to skip your captain. He's playing left winger with Haller being like uh, uh, the number one striker next year. So uh, for me, if you want to cash on Neres, uh, it should be or this season or you have the same situation with with like uh, Onana that you have coming season. So it would be a logical um, thing for him to move on and for Ajax to cash on him. Would I be happy with it? If they cash, good for him, yes. But I would also uh, like to see him another season at Ajax because I like the player. It's not for me uh, necessary for him to move on, but for like money wise, it's it's probably best for Ajax to to make a move and and let him go to another league and cash on him. So I think with with him in my uh, top four, uh, you would definitely uh, have 50 million there at least with, all right. with all the players. And I want to um, make one more uh, remark with the Eklakam situation. You still, you seriously have to consider what the, um, the situation will be next season. If there's room for Eklakam at the midfield, you also have to consider Karel Eiting. He's been away from the club. He's still fit. He's coming back to Ajax. He's a midfielder. In which, which player do you see more potential? Would it be Eiting who is fit again? Or will it be Eklakamp who is who's, uh, on the verge or maybe going or maybe resigning? There's, there isn't room for both, in my opinion, with all the talents coming up. So there has to be a decision made there also. But I just honestly, um, I know you like Eiting. I like Eiting as well. But the yeah. thing with Eiting is he has a really, um, he has an awful history when it comes to injuries. And that's yes. the thing that holds him back all this time because he's a very intelligent player. Nobody doubts that. You know, and some would even say there are some Ajax fans that even also have some uh, second doubt, you know, when it comes to his athletic abilities, because he's not that fast of a player. Um, so these are the two things that, you know, and a lot of, I, I don't think, honestly, it would surprise me it would, if he would stay with Ajax. Um, but I don't know, maybe Rick has another opinion about that. So I think uh, the I think, um I would probably give him the six months until the winter. And then, and then see what happens with him. If uh, Ten Hag gives him the minutes uh, that he probably needs to to um, retain his his match fitness, um, I think a lot of the friendlies in the preseason will probably determine how he feels. Um, with with players coming back from injury, it's very very hard. And like you said, he's he's very injury prone. So whether that the club is willing to maintain on, on keeping uh, the maintenance of him um, is, yeah, I don't know. So probably a decision might be made post the pre-season friendlies. All right. Um, so we concluded the list of uh, Ajax. Uh, Rick, do you have any other names on your list? Uh, yeah, I, I do agree with Ajax that there is, it's probably your jackpot sale this season. Um, he will probably need to, um, to make something happen quite early. Uh, I do believe Neres will uh, be in the Brazilian squad for the, the Copa America. So, um, that may make life a little bit difficult to to um, discuss a sale, but um, yeah, look, he he should easily make thirty million, um, and it'll just be what club he ends up going to. I think uh, his style of play, he he may end up in Spain, but um, yeah, like I said, that's probably the best situation for him. Um, we've got Anthony right now, and we've got we've got some kids coming through that could probably fill the void as a, as a second string and start getting some minutes as well. So um, that, uh, yeah, that's probably the, the best sale that we probably have this season. All right. Thank you both for your takes. I just have two questions for you. You can just answer yes or no. If I would have asked you both half a year ago, should we sell Alvarez? Who would have said yes? Which one of you would have said yes? Honestly, honestly, six months ago. Six months ago, yes. <laughs> Hi, Jax. Yeah, I, I would not have been uh, surprised if they would sell. I would have sold him, but yeah, maybe, maybe the way he was playing, I would have agreed with the sell. But I'm happy we didn't. All right. Uh, another point I would like to to make and also ask you. Um, I'm a bit surprised, not entirely surprised, but slightly surprised. I thought one of you would, would maybe 
mention Schurz on the list. Not because we don't value Schurz, but maybe because you have to sell 50 million and you're thinking maybe one of you have doubts whether he can fulfill his potential. How do you guys see that? Yeah. Uh, I saw. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, sorry. Um, I, I saw. I saw the second half of the season where where Skurs wasn't involved, and uh, the way that the team had played was a lot more free flowing. Uh, Skurs basically uh, play on Delit, and um, he, I think he needs a little bit more maturity. He's not quite there yet. Uh, I believe that given another season, um, he he will probably. Uh, fulfill that um but he still has a lot of learning to do um and uh, i believe that he he will learn that in the next season whether the heart gives him that minutes or sticks with the um with the current back four um noting that blind still needs to come back as well um then where does blind then fall into the lineup because he will certainly be a, a first 11 player so um yeah it will be an interesting 12 months for Skurs, i think yeah, good question, uh, Juan. Um, I do have doubts about Schuurs, you know this. And um, for me, we still need depth in the squad. So if there's not a great substitute for him coming into the club, we still need him for, uh, for the amount of matches we're going to play. But for me, he is not a first 11 player. And I've stated this many times when he did play, because the, the, the blind uh, Schuurs uh, duo, let's not get into that again, but that was not good enough speed-wise and, and uh, not complementary to each other. So uh, Martinez and Timber, the way they've been performing, they are definitely starters. And if we can get good money for, for, for Struis, because we heard some rumors uh, like half a year ago that Premier League clubs were interested in him, you have to sell him for, for, for good money. But otherwise, just keep him for the depth in the squad. Or if you can get a good replacement for him, like a Davis and Sanchez that I've heard, like in the grapevines, you know, uh, so uh, that would be a great uh, substitute player, uh, or maybe a Toby Alderweireld uh, have for 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 the bench or for the depth in the squad. But uh, for me, I can live with it if he stays. If we can get mo- get good money for him, I can live with it also. So that is my take on him. He's not a first eleven player in my eyes anymore. Guys, I can feel it, man. I can. You want to subscribe? 